This is Off Planet Radio. Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. I'm Randy Moggins. The website is offplanetradio.com. And uh, we have um, what I think is going to be a very expanded conversation on some things that we've been talking about for a while now. Um, a lot of this has to do with, well, from our standpoint, the alternative community cleaning up our own backyard and also becoming vigilant about where we go, what we do and from whom we receive information. And, I, and I, I can't stress this enough. It's really important right now that our perceptual levels raise, our intuition fully engage, and that we understand that the enemy of truth right now is not lies, but what's inserted into the truth that spins them in another direction. And to that end, we have a great guest with us tonight, and with me is my co-host, Emily Moyer, and she is going to tell you all about what we're going to talk about. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Um, we have a really special show tonight. And, um, so, you know, to understand kind of why we're doing this and how we got here, I want to kind of lay out a few things for people. So um, something Randy and I for a long time have talked about, we, we, we both have some discomfort with, you know, certain aspects of obviously the alternative media in general, but a lot of these conferences things and the cults around some of these speakers at conferences and, and whatnot. And then in a show last year, it came up. Um, the show uh, was, with, was with Elisa E., which was one of our most important and watched shows last year. The, the, the thing about, you know, uh, intrusions, intrusions and, energy harvesting and operations being performed on people when they're at uh, conferences. And um, for a long time after that show, Randy and I thought we should just clip out that part and put it up as a smaller video because sometimes people don't have the patience to watch a full uh, two hour video. So we talked about that for a while. And then a couple of weeks ago, a few things happened that were synchronistic and very interesting. The first thing that happened was I saw a bunch of videos come out on Miles Johnston's channel, Bases thing, which I'm not, I don't really ever watch. I'm not a fan of, I don't like that. But for some reason, my intuition told me to take a look at them. And there were several people giving an account of having been abducted by Max Spears and James Casbold at a super soldier conference back in 2013. And these were, these videos were strange. And the point for me was whether the shirt's entire, sure, it's possible that happened or didn't happen, but I found it, these interviews to be weird. Um, and then a few days later, they were disturbing to me. And I, 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 like, they bothered me. And then a few days later, I, I saw the poster for the contact in the desert. When I saw that poster and the people that were speaking there, something in me was like, this is something is not good here. I sent Randy a message and said, I can you even imagine what could possibly go on there? Like, look at this group of people. And some of the people who were there are in fact people that we actually like and have yeah. even been on this show. Yeah. But there are lots of other people there who um while, while they probably have good intentions and maybe nice people are uh deceived and being used themselves, though they may not might not know it. And then there's other people there who are downright uh nefarious and and you know have not good intentions in mind and randy took a look at that and how things often go with randy and his eyes with randy and i's and i sort of catalyze something and he sort of goes further and executes it and so he went looking into the whole thing with the cory good and the guy in tv and whatever gaia tv now and ended up posting an article um about it that got 
that went insanely viral and with all sorts of, you know, we had all the trolls and complaints and, and people think, you know, saying nasty things to him, but also some people who were saying that they kind of, they're glad we're saying this and they kind of see what's going on with this and they're not sure. And the reason for me that I showed it to Randy, my concern was that between the thing with Miles Johnston and this thing going on, I felt like the scenario was being set up where they're predictably programming people for the idea that it's t normal for abductions or to happen at conferences, right? And so they're setting that up there with the thing that Miles Johnson did, even though he has nothing to do with this contact in the desert thing. The fact that it came out right before that, I thought was weird. And he did those interviews at a UFO conference. And then when you look at some of the people and some of the things that are, that seem like they're going to go on the contact in the desert thing. I had this just image of they're going to stage some kind of thing where there's going to be some kind of like blue beam kind of thing where these bluebirds or the steers show up or some kind of contact thing that will be some kind of, or, or some kind of abduction scenario that people have been predictively programmed for. It. And some people, because of the way they've been, um, taken in by some other stuff might even actually like uh, like or enjoy or be be wanting and that found that, that was really disturbing to me and so we finally went ahead and put out that video that we've been talking about putting out for a long time um from last year's show with elisa e and so when we decided we we're going to do a show on this there was nobody else that we would have do have this conversation with. So let's uh, welcome back to Off Planet Radio, the author of Our Life Beyond MK Ultra 1 and 2, Elisa E. Welcome back. Well, hi, Emily and Randy. It's good to be back. And welcome back. A, and a, thank you. What an appropriate topic. I'm looking forward to the conversation. I hope my intro, it was kind of a little rambly, but I hope it was clear and I hope people kind of understand the basis of why, why we're doing this. And um, yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. We don't know where this conversation is going to go right now. We're just uh, three people concerned, and we're going to sit down and have a have a talk. And well, I'll so throw we my are. little piece out about the the clip that you put up from our last show, and and the the gist of that for anybody that didn't see it was during our conversation about um, mind control and uh, the MK Ultra programs and so forth. We ran into last year the the subject of the conferences because. Um, as I began to awaken from, significantly awaken from my mind control, um, I was, I believe, programmed to go to ufology because of the, the quote, abduction, end quote, memories and the, the alien beings and so forth, which as I've deprogrammed, you know, have realized that uh, that was a very dangerous place for me. It was a place for me to become, um, to, to be handed off for reprogramming or what have you. So that's kind of how that clip came about and how we've moved into, um, the three of us anyway, being in this conversation. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Randy, you, I, I know you, where, where do we want to start this? Do you want to, you know, you recently attended a conference. You had some thoughts and feelings about it. We want to start it there or where, where do we want to kind of leap off from here? Well, yeah, actually I was at a conference um, about three weeks ago in Philadelphia, which was the Free Your Mind conference. And um, <clears throat> I don't think there's any conferences left. This was a conference that was, quote, about consciousness and ritual abuse. In fact, hold on, let me show you this. It's actually the artwork from the... That's from the conference? Yeah, that's what they put out for the conference. Isn't that dark? Oh my goodness, it's totally Masonic. I know. I know. Wow. Yeah. So, needless well, to say that this is going to, for listeners out there... We'll link to it in the description box. Well, so you well actually, I'll post an image of it. This yeah. is, it's public domain now anyway. But um, the topics that they're dealing with in these conferences are significant enough that they're pulling in people who identify as potential targets of operations, including mind control, satanic ritual abuse, and targeted individuals. I can guarantee you 
For the time I spent at that conference, I talked to a half dozen people who identified as one of those three categories. So to say that this is a harvesting opportunity, as we did last July when we did the original interview with Elisa, at that time was an accurate statement. If anything, now it's being emphasized even more in the way that these conferences are being set up, in even, as you can see, the artwork that's promoting them, the types of speakers that are being presented on these panels. So I guess where I want to go with this, Elisa, is um, you talked in the last interview about what was frankly a fairly horrific experience at a major UFO conference. Um, maybe you can recap that just a little bit for the sake of this interview, and we'll link sure. back to the other interview as well. I believe it was the um, 2008 International UFO Congress is what we were talking about. Okay. And um, that was... Is that, that Laughlin? Was, Laughlin, Nevada? Yes. Okay. That was Laughlin, Nevada, okay. and um, that was being run at the time. I'm not going to name them, but it was a family that mm -hmm. ran it. Uh, they're no longer doing it, I believe. Um, and some very interesting connections within that family, I will also say, that I was cognizant of, just to preface, I was very cognizant of, because here's the, here's the, here's the way it went. The prior year, I started by going to another UFO conference. I was waking up. Um, I was terrified to go. Um, I'm a, a multiple personality, so I had alter voices telling me not to go, that I was outing us. Um, but I didn't know where to go to get help. Um, I knew I had military involvement and intelligence, but I also knew there were these beings and apparent abductions and so forth. So that's the preface. I had gone to another conference in 2000, the end of 2007, and I followed it up by going to the IUFOC in 2008, late, I think it was late February, early March. It was a long conference. I was actually there for 11 days because I worked the conference so that I didn't have to pay for it. I worked the registration desk, uh, which was very interesting and great for me because I was looking for contacts very covertly. Mm -hmm. um, and I got there the first night and stayed. I had a room in the, uh, the motel. I forget which one it was in Laughlin. And I had a, an experience um, which I couldn't figure out how I had gotten to a facility um, on that particular night because I recalled waking up, you know, after a few hours and um, I couldn't figure out how I could have gotten out of bed, gone all the way to another location, had this experience, come all the way back and been put back in bed. It was, it was, I understand, I think now how this all happened, um, being pulled, what I call pulls out of the body, but uh, I won't go into that part. So anyway, I wind up in a facility, um, in a dorm room, a uh, bunch of old bunk beds, not bunk beds, old um, twin beds, metal frames, metal um, headboards and so forth. Uh, a group of kids in the room, I'd say somewhere between 20 and 30 kids, all blonde, blue eyed, um, probably about a half dozen women in there, adult women. Um, they were there clearly to care for the kids. Everybody was silent um, and very frightened. When I came in, I was walked in. Um, I was in an alter, what I call an altered state, but I was aware something was going to happen. Um, and I won't go through the entire experience, but suffice to say that I was in a, in a, a very bizarre fashion, um, partially reprogrammed in front of these kids and women who all began to pull away from me. They saw this coming and, and were very frightened. Um, and also I was there in that process to traumatize. Uh, what was happening to me was there to traumatize the, the women and mm -hmm. the children in particular. They were all, the kids were all probably, I don't know real well kids ages, but I'd say probably um, maybe four and five, something like that, maybe six, I don't know. Um, probably not even that old. So, um, and this was the first night at the conference. Uh, the next day I would get up and help with setup. Um, I had several experiences uh, while I was there for 11 days, including um, handlers 
a, a very significant potential handler sent in near the end of the conference who I would um, actually, I was aware of, or highly suspicious, I should say. I red flagged him and knew that he was an operative, but he was also under mind control. And um, I won't continue on what happened after, but it did lead me uh, to some people that was um, a combination of, it would turn out that um, at that point I was truly ready to deprogram. But had I not been that strong, where they led me um, would have taken somebody else out due to my presence. So uh, does that sound clear? Does that make yeah. sense yeah, without pretty, me going into detail? Yeah, that's pretty clear progression. Yeah. yeah. So I just okay. want to say, I just realized this as we were talking. So you, the place that these supposed thing happened at the super soldier conference that I was talking about, the supposed abduction by of yeah. these women and a few, there's men too. And Miles Johnson is saying that maybe he was taken to happened also in Laughlin. Yes. So that's very, so I find that to be interesting. Maybe it was the same hotel. Um, it might've been. Yeah. So, right. So, and these people like they, like it seems like they're talking about, uh, an actual physical abduction, but they may just not be completely uh, as um, good at look at, at understanding the minor details to let one know the difference between when. Let's even actually... talk about the locations for a minute. Yeah. Okay. Um, because Laughlin is significant, and it's in the desert. It's yeah. In the desert, its proximity is to a major military base base location. Yes. And it is also the site of numerous, as I understand it, crash retrieval missions as well. Going back to the 1940s, we're not talking anymore about, you know, Roswell. We're talking about a whole rash of UFO, quote, type crashes where the retrieval operations that occurred and they're all occurring in these clusters. Now we have Joshua Tree, California, Mm -hmm. And the uh, contact in the desert, what if, even just the name of the conference. And I, I'm just going to say this, this sticks on nobody except me because I stuck my neck out and I've made it very clear that what I said was my educated opinion about what's going on with this specific conference and specifically several of the speakers that are there as well. But we're looking at what is such a perfect storm in terms of Joshua Tree, because of the energies and because of what goes on in the desert out around Joshua Tree. Um, that area mm -hmm. out there has a heavy populace of, let's just say, some dark practitioners. It has, a, it has a military base. Military base. Um, it has a very interesting juxtaposition with a certain piece of rock and roll history and a key death in rock and roll history as well, the death of... Mm -hmm. um, Graham Parsons of the Flying Dorito Brothers, the Birds. Also, you also you too has a, an album titled Joshua, Joshua Tree. Tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, none of these things are coincidental. And then mm -hmm. we have we have the presence of people who are known. And I, I'll just say it: the fact that Stephen Greer is going to be there tells you there's going to be these trips out to the desert at night to <laughs> call in craft, which. I've been on the record forever as saying, this is the most fucking dangerous, stupid thing you can do. Yep. <laughs> My words, nobody else's. So, I think I, I agree with you. So that Randy, you the, really, Randy, you really need to learn how to express yourself. I do. I do. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> well, you know, let, let's, let's talk a little bit about Joshua Tree and Stephen Greer. Interestingly enough, before I woke up, I spent a winter sleeping in Joshua Tree, <laughs> <laughs> oh, like months, uh, with a very interesting person. Um, and uh, there is stuff going on out there. There's a, a very strong military base. We used to go into town to shower, you know, every now and then at the gym. And uh, yeah, I mean, there were military crawling all over the place. And I personally, you know, wrote this years ago uh, about my programming to Stephen Greer. And uh, one of the things that occurred in the early, early 
very conscious days when I was living in Taos, New Mexico, when I began to wake up was I was absolutely obsessed with driving from Taos. This would be before Mm. I go up to, this would be right before I would turn around and drive up to uh, the Salt Lake City area and meet the guy that came to the IUFO conference, uh, the potential handler. Okay. So right before that, I hear voices in the house set that I'm in. Um, and I get in my car on just a whim and drive down to Roswell, New Mexico, go into the UFO museum and pull out videos of Stephen Greer and pop them in. They had a little center, this room where you could sit by yourself and play videos. Well, it was, um, like a library for the IUF or for the UFO museum down there. And I got so triggered that I turned around and shot up to, uh, took me a couple of days to shoot up to Salt Lake City and um, and hook up with this. It was insane. I mean, there's no doubt this guy was programmed and he was the handler and I was sent up there. This is, this. Is, I'm not saying, I don't know what all the connections are, but it became very clear that I was sent up there to meet with him. There was always a gun in the vehicle when he drove me to meet um, Dr. A. Truat and a friend of his to deprogram, but there was a program for me to um, take out Dr. Ott's family. And um, I wrote about that in the book and I fought it for five days and I finally left the guy up there and, um, you know, was hit with sleep program while trying to drive out of Salt Lake City because I wasn't going to do what I needed to do. So you see the series of events here. I go to IUFOC. um, This happens. This guy shows up. I'm thinking, you know, go with him because he knows more about you and your programming than you do. I mean, I was leading a really dangerous life at that time. And then I, you know, I'm on the phone with him in Taos that weekend. I start hearing voices. I'm on the phone with him and I tell him that I, you know, remember the military abductions and uh, bam, then I'm off to Roswell. You know, I don't, I don't know how those things got triggered, but Stephen Greer was a huge part of it for me. And um, I believed that I knew him from, from many years before. And um, I'm, I can't swear that that's true. Um, I absolutely believe, and I will, will say it here, and probably I'm going to catch a lot of shit. I wrote about it in the book, but Good. Um, I absolutely believe he is totally programmed yep. and that what he's doing is what he was programmed for yep. this public uh, project disclosure and the whole, you know, benevolent alien crap. Nonsense. And- <laughs> All we have to do is go to the public record right now because we have photographs of Stephen Greer with John Podesta. We know that Stephen Greer has been updating John Podesta and Hillary Clinton in matters of so-called extraterrestrial importance. So publicly, you know, I guess you have to assume there's six degrees of separation from everything, and we're just connecting the dots here. So we, here we have a co- direct connection between Pizzagate or sexual abuse. Yes, and, exactly. Uh, and and a, 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 a disclosure or the alien contact experience, which is what you were basically alluding to before. So basically, so what we're saying is we've got a we've got a guy in a pedophile yeah. in public office, and Stephen Greer is associating with him. That's right. what we're saying, yeah. right? That's pretty much yeah. what we're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, and that's... I went um, in 2009, summer 2009. He was speaking in Denver, and I went to confront him. And uh, I drove there and got a room. I made sure I got a room because I wanted to kill him. That's God's honest truth. And I got a room about ten miles away, so that and the music playing. First of all, it was blasting before it began. Was Enigma which oh, I God. have in my, I have in my collage work, which is mm-hmm. really interesting. Mm-hmm. That's very powerful. So one of your collages, me. one of your collages is really focused on Stephen Greer. In fact, it's yes. quite powerful. Yeah. And it really hit me. It stopped me at the door. Anyway, I take my seat. I was about four rows from the stage. It hadn't started. He was up there with, uh, I think her name's Paola Harris. Paola uh, Harris. She's yeah. U- Paola Paola Harris. Harris. She's, Harris. she's yes. UFO. Yeah. I forget who else was there. They were pre- seemed pretty tight by the way. Um, and he had a, he had an entourage of bodyguards 
And, mm -hmm. um, and so this thing start, well, before it started, I guess I had this look on my face. I mean, I must've had some serious look on my face because one of the bodyguards uh, locked eyes with me and looked at me for, oh, I'd say about 10 seconds. Then he leaned over to one of the other bodyguards and whispered in his ear. And that bodyguard <laughs> walked to the end of my aisle and stood there for the rest of the, the thing. And I thought, wow, you know, because I was programmed to this guy with a devoted altar. I call her Greer's girl, totally devoted to him. And then I had another altar that wanted to kill him. So I imagine at that early stage sitting there, I was flipping back and forth. I could feel it like one moment, just this incredible desire. And then the other moment, just absolute hatred. So, but I'm watching this conference and he's well into the conference. Now he's speaking and I'm thinking, this is a load of crap. And I look around <laughs> the room and people are mesmerized. I mean, eyes are locked on him. The mouths are hanging open. They're hanging completely hypnotically entranced. Yes. yes, yes. And he's totally neurolinguistic. Oh, no, he's you know? absolutely mastered NLP. Unbelievable. And an ego that is just out of the ballpark. So anyway, after uh, one guy got up, he took questions. One guy tried to confront the, um, the abduction issue as something negative and he got pushed aside. Yep. Um, and then afterwards, uh, there was a book signing. So that was my moment. So I, I went up and, um, it was very bizarre for me because he looked at me and like, it was really fast. He looked me in the eye, looked down my body and looked quickly looked away and wouldn't make eye contact again. And um, I said, I know you, and there was somebody behind me. And um, I'm sorry, miss, you know, you need to move on kind of thing. And, um, and then I said something about, you know, what about the, um, the military abduction aspect and so forth. And I, I really got very quickly shuffled out of the line um, and the people behind me. And he wouldn't, I kept trying to talk to him and he wouldn't acknowledge me. He wouldn't look at me. And his bodyguards, you know, protect him really well. Um, but I was so uh, triggered by him. I mean, it, I went out in the car and called a friend of mine long mm. distance and sat in the parking lot. There was not another car in the parking lot. You know, two hours later, I was still on the phone screaming, crying um, all over the place. So I often wonder if there are other people who are, you know, in that regard or that deeply programmed to someone like to him, to him in particular. To him, and then now to, to someone. To, to him, and then now to David Wilcock and Corey Good. Corey and these, Good. These, yeah. this, I mean, they're all going to be there, and these they all have. So, what Stephen Stephen Greer and Corey Good and David. So you have Corey Good and David Wilcock's kind of story and the way, what they do, which is different than Stephen Greer. But you have complete cults around both of these people, and right. even though they are different in what in the what how they talk about what they talk about i see a lot of the same mm -hmm. um this a lot of the same concerns like i, I see a lot of, a lot of the same similarities in both the kind of um, energy and funding that's around them terrorism. it's it's basically and fundamentally yeah. a cult mindset because it's based on believing in something with greer it's that all t's all et's are positive and with corey right. Good, to varying degrees, he's not talking a lot about the negative side of. He's not talking about my labs first off. Well, he he he, he mentions my labs. Like he'll say something like, "I was brought into the my lab program," but then doesn't really express what that is and why that is not an okay or good exactly. thing. But so right. think, but his front yeah. ar but his front argument is ultimately the blue avians have a message for you, and right. it's service to others and love yourself be nice yeah you know and and it's kind of like the whole point of this is we might need to hear that message but we don't need to hear it from, from bluebird reels from bluebird from bluebird exactly yeah, because, right from project well, bluebird <laughs> what they've done is they've weaponized love and light i mean look the whole new age movement was weaponized as well right to lead it's us in the spiritual it's, traps. It's, it's disempowering. You know, it's not about stepping up and taking back, 
what we need to take back and yeah. shutting down all the pedophiles and yes. Luciferians and military. And it's not about that. It's about just you know, just, this is another beautiful world. And, you know, we just go with the flow. And that's, that's what the new age did. It disempowered. It's like, we're not supposed to step up in the right way. I'm not talking about necessarily guns and so forth. I'm saying stepping up and making sure that this shit doesn't continue. You know, this is not acceptable. Yeah. I, for me, like the, the problem with, with the message is mainly that it's too, that, that, Okay, so we need to hear it from something outside of ourselves to, for, in order for it to be an important message, right? The bluebirds are mm-hmm. telling us that we need to do this when there's lots <laughs> of people, human beings here, who've been saying that stuff, who have little shows off to the right that get 200 views, they've all been saying that stuff. Why is it somehow more, like, how is it more important when the bluebirds say it? You know what I mean? Like, and why is it... Um, why is that special? Like, why can't Corey Good just say it from himself that humans, like, why does he have, why does it have to be this, like, attachment to an entity outside of their self? This externalization of everything is the biggest problem I think we deal with. Let's frame that as a question. Is it, first off, Elisa, are we seeing active triggers implanted into even the term blue avians? And is this, something that's kind of being encoded as an acceptance into entrainment. I think so. And, you know, I think the whole, I love that Emily calls it blue bird rather than blue avian, because this is really what, this is what we're talking about. And blue birds were actually the actual, uh, you know, picture of a bluebird was used years ago in programming. I mean, blue bird Mm -hmm. was a part of a programming. So, and what Emily was saying about how, Greer and like, for example, Corey Good are different, but to me, it's just a progression. Yep. It's like yes. um, kind of like the same thing between my model as far as MK Ultra and the newer Super Soldier model, the younger right. 30 something or 30 and under. Um, it's a progression. It's a, yep. it's a new, new version. And yep. the fact that these two guys are there together that's what tripped me up was that we've got yeah. Greer and the new yeah. version, the old version and the new. And I'm going to answer your question by reading some something on psychological operations. Okay. It's just like, okay. like Emily said, why do we have to hear this from somebody else? Well, this is why psychological operations or psyops are planned process of conveying messages to a target audience, which is a TA to promote certain attitudes, emotions, and behaviors These messages are typically conveyed using a line of persuasion known as a theme. PSYOP is basically the use of communication to influence behavior. It is used against adversaries, their supporters, and their potential supporters. It is defined by the U.S. Army in the following way, quote, psychological operations are planned operations to convey selected information and indicators and they use the word to foreign audiences, but we all know with the Patriot Act and HR 1955 that it's domestic as well. Um, to influence, um, this is their quote, to influence their emotions, motives, objective reasoning, and ultimately the behavior of foreign governments, organization, groups, and individuals. An important consideration here is that a, a target audience can be a group or an individual. Target audience is defined by the Joint Chiefs of Staff publication entitled Doctrine for Joint Psychological Operations as, quote, an individual or group selected for influence or attack by means of psychological operations. Um, and I could go on. This is, this is from, I want to quote it. It's from a book called New World War Revolutionary Methods for Political Control, and it's Mark M. Rich. And that M is important because there's a Mark Rich out there that's a a perpetrator, I think, that wrote some books. But I I recommend this book for everybody. It's not just about psychological operations. It's an amazing reference book. And I just want to break it down a little bit more. Um, There's several terms. There's five different categories. The term psychological warfare is reported to have first been used in the English language in 1941 as a translation of the German phrase, which I can't pronounce, (laughs) which means worldview warfare. 
uh, which means the scientific application of terror and propaganda as a way of securing an ideological victory over an enemy. Some researchers use the term propaganda or PSYOP interchangeably. A military deception seeks to mislead the enemy by affecting all conduits of information which they rely on to make decisions. This includes all systems, groups, and even individuals which en the enemy uses as a source of information. So, and then one more, neocortical warfare is mm. a RAND version, mm -hmm. our RAND, the think tank, yep. of PSYOP that controls the behavior of the enemy without physically harming them. RAND describes the neocortical system as consciousness, perception, and will. Neocortical warfare regulates the enemy's neocortical system by interfering with their continuous cycle of observation, orientation, decision, and action. It presents the enemy with perceptions, sensory, and cognitive data designed to result in a narrow set of conclusions and ultimately actions. I'll yeah, there. that pretty much sums it up. I mean, what I, my, the, when, the, you know, when I first heard of these blue avian things a couple of years ago, I don't pay much attention to that stuff. That just, that isn't my thing. But like the first thing I thought of was this is like the project bluebird. How can people not see this? So now that I've looked into it a little more, I'm like, this to me seems like <laughs> an updated new age mass application of project bluebird for people who don't know what project bluebird is. It was actually one of the original mind control programs before artichoke and before MK ultra and Bluebird, so it was that, but it also is a programming trigger, as Elisa mentioned. And I will speak to this um, from, you know, something I'm trying to unwind myself, that I believe it is part of Wizard of Oz programming, in which they use the song and the term, rainbow to get the people that they are programming, they're like pushing them to go over the rainbow. And if they can force them into that space, that is where the bluebirds fly and da 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 da. So it's a way of kind of coaxing children, sort of, because this is a mind control program that is perpetrated on children generally, this type of programming. And it's a way of making something yucky seem fantastic and beautiful. And the bluebirds are there because we think how sweet they're there, ch chirping and this and that and that. And, the, and what it really is doing is implanting in the child's mind these bluebirds that are triggers that can be called upon later. Yeah, we've right, talked about this Right, and going over the rainbow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Over the rainbow. Over the, over oh, the because rain. well, yeah. most of the people will see, their, see what they're doing is they're, once again, it's the same thing. Like between, you've got Greer, the old, old program, and you've got, Corey, good. I'm sorry. I'm going to say that the new program. And what happens is you're covering all of those all bases. Programs, whether you were programmed in the fifties, yep. the sixties, or, you know, in modern day, it's going to set off something. And the over the rainbow part in that song yep. is these were people who had had at that time were, uh, you know, created MPD, multiple personality. So when they would trigger and alter, you would that phrase was often used over the rainbow, you mm -hmm. moved into the altar. And like you yep. said, then there's this beautiful landscape and bluebirds. And the I think there's also, yeah. I think there's, also, I think there's also a second purpose for the rainbow. And I think that some of the altars are color coded. And so yes. you're not only going over the yes. rainbow, Absolutely. but then yeah. we have color coded yes. altars and, and color, as well as color coded sort of frequency levels of, um, where this is Illuminati are. symbolism. Emeralds, the Emerald City, ruby slippers. Yep. Golden Follow road. the yellow brick road. Click your um, heels and go home. All that stuff is come. You no, know, it's just it's 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 a, it's a literal shopping cart of, of of triggers, just like Peter Pan. Yeah. Um, Alice in Wonderland. Kind of all my that. reference point. Alice, Alice in Wonderland. These are all triggers, and, and it looks to me like looking at the material that's coming out on these websites now, a lot of this stuff is actually sitting there in color coding, in imagery, and even in the semantics that's used on the sites as kind of global triggers just to implant and just mm -hmm. kind of bring this up, knowing full well the people who are attracted to this some of them are going to be TIs, ex-project people, people who are under SRA, people who are under, currently under mind control. 
Absolutely. And I want to tell you that the, the holding back from going to these in the early years of deprogramming was like coming off of uh, nicotine. Heroin. Yeah, I'm going to add. Yeah, heroin. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. I literally had physiological salivating to go. Wow. I, I had to go. And it took everything, and I do believe my higher, you know, stronger self to say, no, this is not where you need to be. There was, I knew there was something wrong, but the desire. So my feeling is that there are a lot of people out there who mm -hmm. don't recognize that they're programmed and that desire comes up and they go. They yeah. just go. They just go. Because it's where they want to be. You yeah, know, I mean, it feels and, you know, really good. And there, I mean, there is, in, in, in a... In, a, in, a, in a, an appropriate world, in a perfect world, sure, it's great to go and get to meet other people who have like interests and who also have like experiences and, uh, and, and whatever. But we're not, this right now is not a safe time to do that. We're, we're living in a time where everything that is presented as enlightenment and entertainment is actually entrainment and harvesting. You know, and so it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. I mean, I to me at this point, I mean, I've never something has always told me no about conferences. The only thing I have ever been to was just that consciousness beyond chemtrails. That was not a. It was in in the in town in Los Angeles, and I went for just a couple of hours. Um, you know, it wasn't the same kind of deal where everybody conglomerated on some place for where there was a hotel and whatever. But even within that, I felt a little odd when I was there. So there's something in me that has always been like, eh, I don't know about this. But I do think that there are occasionally some people who have, you know, small one day things where three or four people get together and speak. And I think that can probably be okay. Not that there's never anything going on there, but this thing where they're taking people out into a remote location far away from where there's not only like, you know, all your usual amenities, there's not cell phone reception out there, which can be a lovely experience if, you know, to get away from the grid. But also when there's no competing frequencies, that allows for all sorts of, you know, whatever they want to do there. If they have technology there that is, you know, frequency based, that is great for mental entrainment or for in inducing visuals or hallucinations or neocortal mind control or any of this kind of stuff, there's not even anything to interfere with that. It's wide open out there. You know, right. and people are out, it's hot. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people there will be camping. So they're out of their normal way of taking care of themselves. It's almost exactly like going to Burning Man, which is like a feast for all of these kinds of, you know, sure, there is some cool stuff. There's some music and art that I'm sure even I would love, but just the same thing that tells me not to go to conferences has always kept me away from going to Burning Man because they're just, you're sitting out there. I mean, in the most like, inhospitable environment where you're open to everything like you just have none of your usual like self-protection none of your usual ways of sort of checking yourself against what your general reality is to know would you agree that like that's kind of well and, and yeah I, I do and my issue with a lot of um the so-called information that's coming out is that people aren't looking at the entire thing like for example okay um, Greer wants to tell us, I'm, I'm basing this on something I heard years ago from his experiencers out in Joshua Tree and so forth about of course. Plas so, yeah, of course. plasma ships, okay, right. plasma ships. Well, you know, how many people at Contact in the Desert are going to be talking about um, the technology that is currently and has been up and running right. for many, many years through the military intelligence corporate sector? Right. Um, I just, that's why I read the PSYOP stuff was because it's, it's like what they're saying is they're funneling the information. They're limiting the information. The yeah. PSYOP is to control what you have access to. So you heard a bunch of people into a, a conference. You've got hundreds of people in there and they're only looking at what this guy says or that yeah. guy says, and that's the only explanation. Yep. There's no other, you know, you're not allowed to talk about the, the military plasma balls that are flying around because of the, you know, the, the, the grid and harp and, um, right. you know, all the experiments are doing with electromagnetic weaponry. Um, right. So, so it's this funneling of, and, and containment of what they're, someone's exposed to. So they're there for three days and they leave and, and I can speak from experience. This is, um, I was waking up, but it was like, 
it's it's seductive it's um yeah it's you're you're infused with it and i imagine because of some of my experiences like in laughlin i was there for quite a while and something that happened to me at least three times was felt like there was an earthquake um and a couple times it happened when i was in my room late at night or early morning hours but one time it happened while i was sitting in a room full of at least 200 people listening to a speaker who by the way was a quote alien abductee um and quote from florida um i forget the guy's name jim sparks um and it i'm sitting in a chair and the whole room felt like it was shaking and so much so that I started looking around to expecting, I felt like I was going to fall off my chair and everybody was completely entranced. Um, they uh -huh. were all locked on the speaker. Um, mm -hmm. I tapped the guy next to me and said, did you feel that? What is that? And he looked at me all confused and said, feel what? So do you think that could be something like they're well, putting off like a subtle kind of weaponry to see if anybody notices? And if don't, if they don't, <laughs> then they know they've reached the point of hypnosis where they can send, put, they, where he can lay down whatever program he's ready to lay down. Well, uh, this is my concern because as the conference went on, I don't know how it came out, but there were two other people, <laughs> two other people who felt it. Mm -hmm. And guess who those two were? One of them was the potential handler and the other one was a self-proclaimed hybrid alien abductee. Mm -hmm. So in other words, we were all three mind controlled. Right. So we're the ones feeling it. Other people aren't. So what the heck is going on at this conference? Are they targeting individuals or is it like you said, there's something coming in? We're very sensitive because of our histories and what they're doing to us, and we're picking it up, but other people aren't. I don't know. I'll, I'll, so my my thought is is that I think it could be either, but all three of you, like, were probably um, in a sta some stage of deprogramming or in having your programming break down, and these other people who are there are still in the process of being programmed. So for you, it's ringing something that you're like, oh, this just doesn't feel right to me because you're already, are, you're on the other side of it. So if, if, the thing is, if the thing is a mountain, right, and you're already coming down the other side and they're still on the way up, it's, it's like a completely different kind of. Uh, that, you know, could, that could be, I I'm will say this. i you on other side of this as well is that yeah. frequencies are being introduced that are taking people into alpha state mixed yeah. with, the neurolinguistic skills of the speakers because I notice yes. the top tier of these speakers have a certain cadence, they have a structure of language, yeah. <clears throat> they have an ability to do trance state by invocation, all of they which do hand we're motions all and familiar like with here how this all works. So, you have a mass body of people who are essentially in a suggestible state, alpha. Uh, probably heading towards theta at this point that you know they want to keep them awake but they want you enough yeah. in a trance state to receive the message hypno suggestible hypno hypnosis kind of yeah. state yeah. And, and the fact that they're layering signals in as well over top of all of this because I've actually experienced this at a number of conferences mm -hmm. of frequencies they make me physically sick I usually mm -hmm. wind up I can't stay in these places when I went to Philadelphia we went to the speakers. I took my son with me. We went to see the speakers we wanted to see. And when we weren't in the conference or when I wasn't meeting with some people that I wanted to meet there, we left. We didn't, yeah. we didn't stick didn't around. Hang around. Yeah. 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 Like I, I, I think that's, I mean, aside from the whole thing in general, that time when you're not necessarily hearing a speaker, but when you're just hanging out in the lobby and, and socializing and whatever, sure, you're meeting some people you've talked to online or some of your friends, but there, there are also all sorts of agents mingling amongst gathering yes. intelligence, planting ideas, you know what I mean? Doing reconnaissance on people. Um, and, you know, so. And I, I, I've seen them. I mean, I've actually yeah. interacted yeah. with some of those who are actual intelligence agents yes. in the IUFOC in 2008. There was a young woman, she was not speaking, but she was invited down as a guest. Um, she is definitely programmed. She wound up getting hooked up with Project Camelot after that. Um, and <laughs> at this, don't even get me started on that. At this conference, we're in a room 
um, it's, it was dinner or something, or somebody was speaking of, I mean, there's like hundreds of people. She's outside. She comes in the room, picks me out and says, can you come out and talk to me? We had talked a little bit. Now the outside the room, this is just to, to prove my point outside the room, uh, the conference room area, huge conference room is kind of an open space area where everybody would come in and funnel in. There was nothing out there. There was nobody out there but her and myself. There were uh, there was a one of those conference tables that you know the fake wood that folds the tape. The legs fold out. There was a couple of pamphlets on it, and there were two chairs there. We were near this table, so I come out. We sit down, and she's very nervous. She tells me she is being followed. She believes she's being followed at the conference. She doesn't know what to do. She was very um, inexperienced. I was like just cool as a cucumber. And over in the corner of this room where there's nothing going on is a blonde haired woman, a, a guy with brown hair, a teenage boy and a small girl about an adolescent girl, a family just over in this corner, not making eye contact, trying to look like they're busy. And I look over and I immediately realize these two, uh, the two adults are intelligence agents and the children are mind controlled. They've created a, a covert family surveillance. And as I'm engaging with her, we're face to face. She kind of has her back to them. I keep glancing up. And this woman is so curious about what we're talking about. Because now you have to remember, both of us are mind controlled, right? So she keeps coming over. There's nothing for her to do by us. She has to come over to hear the conversation. She will not look at us. She's literally three to four feet away when she does, and she walks back over. There's no question in my mind what I was looking at. Absolutely no question whatsoever. And they were surveilling and following this young woman and harassing her. She would go on years later to have a near-death car accident. Um, it would be after that, as she began to recover, that she wound up um, working with Project Camelot. Wow. So there, there's no question in my mind. I have met several operatives in these rooms, in those conferences. There are actual, I'm talking about people who aren't, aren't just contracted out, but are actually members of intelligence agencies. Yeah. And there's no doubt in my mind that, that that teenage boy and that adolescent girl were mind controlled. And that was, that's the kind of stuff we were all used to. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Exactly. Yeah. You've got to remember that children are sent out as operatives in the field to do specific tasks yes. that children yeah. do. Yeah. Yes. Well, they, it's, it's partly because the people aren't suspicious of them, but partly because there are right. some things that children are well, very good at. That, she may have been the yeah. tape recorder. <laughs> that, well, that's what I'm. Yeah. That's right. The child, child, you know, children have a different kind of ability for memory and for observation right. and things like that. And adults. who's going to look at a family as surveillance unless you're an insider who knows how it works? Who's going to yeah. Who's going to think the family surveillance? Oh, well, they got kids. I'm, I'm, I bet you there'll be family. I bet you there will be families there camping at this contact in the desert thing. Yeah. Yeah, have the whole family out there to just, you know, p picnic and w watch the show in the sky or whatever, you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, Lisa, let me ask you this. Like, and we've, you and I have talked about this a little bit and, you know, what, what, do you, what do you think of this whole secret space program in general? I would like to hear from you what you think of that and, and Randy's kind of view on that. And then I want to say what I think is going on here with the whole... Okay. Like yeah. this, we, we know that there, it is, let's just hear your kind of, when, when, when someone says secret space program, what do you think? Okay. Well, there's, to me, there's two, once again, getting back to looking at the full scope rather than the funneled information. So there's two, in general, two versions that are being pumped out, um, mm -hmm. or maybe one version that's trying to take uh, take precedence when there's, to me, there is an actual weapon program, mm -hmm. um, I believe, and I'm not an expert on this. Okay. I'm not saying this as insider information, but, um, I do believe that there is a, uh, incredible, uh, detrimental, um, global weapons program, a uh, grid that involves a variety of mind control apparatus down here on the ground that works with things up in the sky, um, including the ionized atmosphere. So to me, that's what I would call the real 
secret space program. I wouldn't even call it a space program. I would call it a, a major mind control. Atmospheric mind control program. Yes. Yeah. Well, so that is going for the masses. Yeah. Now what's being promulgated is a cross between uh, the, the, and there's old versions of Corey Good. Okay. There's very yeah. old versions. He's nothing yeah. new. In no. my book, he's nothing new. He's just no. a new version. I mean, we have people talking about working on Mars that goes back into the, the 90s. Right. Okay. Um, so, again, remember how this works. They sample out a few people. Sure. And then if it's gaining momentum, they create a bigger project and it becomes a, a huge uh, movement, like the super soldier thing. There right. were real people being used in programs, but they let a little bit out and then they glamorized and Hollywoodized it and sent out the big suit soldier program. Okay. That was the progression. And to me, the secret space program is similar in that there are people that are not just the, the ones talking about, um, the really woo woo stuff. Okay. But I'm talking about the people that are talking about, uh, what appears to be, uh, UFOs and forgive me, but the, you know, there's a big movement called exopolitics. And right. I believe that a lot of, and I want to qualify this before we, we leave this issue. I need to say something, but I think there's a lot in the exopolitics. I'm so happy you brought this up. Thank you. Is it's a huge money operation. This is, this thing is funded like I've never seen before. And to me, there's a lot of misinformation and disinformation. And I don't think everybody's complicit in that is speaking at a lot of these things that realizes what they're sharing. I think a lot of people don't realize that they've been, um, uh, they're sheep dipped or, you yeah. know, they're part of a limited hangout. Um, yeah. and what I want to say is at a lot of these conferences, uh, like you mentioned, uh, consciousness beyond chemtrails, you know, in 2012, I didn't get to go, but one of my favorite talks of all time is what Sophia yeah, Smallstorm said yeah, that, that I, 2012, the one, you yeah, know, that's beyond, the one I was there, so, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, so there are people where there's a legitimate speaker, um, but then they're surrounded by <laughs> either misinformers, which is unintentional, or disinformers, which is intentional. So that's my version of um, you know, secret space program. There is a huge, huge uh, covert program on, but it's not being presented. Uh, it's not being presented in a, a the big flashy way in the alternative community um, as as it's not the full picture. Even at some of the chemtrail stuff, it's like they're not presenting yeah. the mind control aspect. They're right. presenting no. No. Uh, climate change and weather warfare solely. Right. Yeah, there's weather warfare, but this is much more huge as far as mind control goes. So yeah, that's yeah, I, I always, I always, I have a real problem with the chemtrail people who don't acknowledge on the interior edge, Clifford Carnicom. Right. for what's inside the spray, and then on the exterior edge, Sean Gattreau for documenting another part of... I mean, the way he is ignored by the chemtrail yeah. people, when I'm going to go out and say it, I think actually... The UFO community. The, he's ignored by the UFO yeah. community and the chemtrail community and the secret space program community. When I would say he's actually the person that has doc documented the most about all of those things. He has the most video evidence right. and they ignore the shit out of him. You know what I yes. mean? Like, what it, I was going to say earlier, too, yeah. was... Those who remember back to the 80s, if you recall Reagan's program, Strategic Defense Initiative, SDI. the code name was yeah. Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. operations yeah. weave a fair amount of these, we call them fictional fantasy allusions into real programs. I mean, that's what Rand Corporation does. They term these, uh, right. these names just like they did with the first Iraq war. Um, yeah. that's all branding, but that's also part of that same program that you read about earlier in, in, in the mm -hmm. show, Lisa, is, is getting this into the consciousness where people begin to flow with the pattern and suspend critical thinking to embrace the larger paradigm. Right. The theme or the meme, right? The theme of the meme. The theme yeah. or the meme. Yeah. 
And the blue yeah. avian, as mm -hmm. we pointed out, the blue bird, the blue, blue avian bird. is the theme meme. And it's being created from the little I've seen of Corey Good, because I, I really can't listen to much nope. of it, to no. be honest. I no. can't no. stand it. My stomach but hurt. The, I'll, I'll, I'll skim through and keep going forward and get enough of it that I don't see him as presenting something terrifying and threatening or um, to our demise. I see, you know, it's it's dissemination, it's indoctrination, it's it's uh, it's the theme, it's the meme, so that we are we become immune to it. We yeah. become immune. There's nothing that needs to be done. It's just some other funky, cool thing that we can go and spend a weekend talking about, and maybe we'll have an experience of it. While you know the true weaponry is just pumping God knows what yeah. into that situation, as you said. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, do, do you have something you want to say about the secret space program, Andy? And then I'll say what I want to say. No, I, for now, I'd, I'd just like to kind of stay on the track because the secret space program is such a labyrinth right now that I just prefer if we can get some clarity on, on what Elisa thinks about this. I, I really find the whole thing to be a tripwire because of what I believe about what space actually is relative to what has been taught. And yeah. also what I believe is being presented by people that I will say, believe what they are telling you. And I've said this about people who have been on the show. I totally believe they are not lying. But I also don't mm -hmm. believe that what they experienced was what they presented because it was either a simulation or it was an induction. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can go with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Emily, do you want to? Yeah, well, wanna... I, what I was going to say about it, you know, I spent, mm -hmm. this is something that I've spent a lot of time looking at because for many, for many reasons. And so I'm going to say some things here and I'm just speaking because this is how I try to unwind this stuff. So I agree with the things you said about the different kind of, the, first of all, there are multiple, it is not secret space program, it is secret space programs that are multiple. And there's the thing you talked about, there's the tiered thing, which is the, the weaponry and whatever, and then there's this other thing that is the Corey Good kind of whatever. But for me, there's like more, like there's all these different aspects to it. And I like, one of the things I keep, there's two things, first of all. I noticed for myself that um, the secret space program thing started to come up around the same time for myself and probably for lots of other people that the massive recognition of the level of sexual abuse that, uh, mm -hmm. that this country has been under, you know, like the pedophilia and, and, and lots, lots of us as individuals, you know, I, I noticed that this kind of came along at the same time as mm -hmm. this rise of knowledge about that. And for me in my own personal experience, when trying to unwind something, when I started to consider the possibility that maybe there had been some sexual abuse in my past, which is still something I'm not sure of and I'm still working through and whatever, somebody showed up trying to convince me that I had been to Mars. Mm -hmm. And, to, and um, mm -hmm. to me, I, I thought that, I, in high, like, I, I, just, I told you about this once before, and mm -hmm. I just thought that was so weird. And like, it, it, to me, it felt like there was like a fork at that point where I could have taken as to how I went about trying to unwind things for myself. And it mm -hmm. seemed like some of the secret space program kind of stuff is almost like, and this might be not the right term for it, but a screen memory for mm -hmm. sexual abuse. And that takes us back to what you were talking about, where when you were starting to wake up, there was the levels there of, of the sexual abuse and then the levels of abductions and things like that. And the two this thing about abduction or, or space or whatever seems to be somehow linked with this other yes. thing. And yeah. so I think there's also that I agree with Randy. I think that space is not anything like what they tell us it is. I think that, you know, what most of the money that they say they're putting into space exploration is actually being used to weaponize the atmosphere and all these military mm -hmm. programs. I don't, I'm not, I'm not convinced people actually go to space. And if they do, it's not the way that they say that they say it happens. So I think a lot of this, I think there's a lot of people 
who've been convinced that they've been to space when really they've been sent into some sort of virtual or simulated environment or they've just been mind controlled. So I think the secret space program at the base human level is a mind control program. And I think there's even in the words around it, because you know these, these fuckers love wordplay. So I have said on the show before that I think the secret is that there's no space. It's just a program, right? I think that's like, you know, then I start dug more into it. I thought what, what the secret space program might actually be, or really is, is they're creating a secret space inside of you, a compartment, which they program into this idea of (laughs) this, there's that, right? And then they, there's this other thing that they know that there is that, uh, space or the universe is actually something sort of inside yourself and so what this really is is a weaponized program to explore and to be able to destroy and manipulate consciousness so that they know that there's a secret space inside of you like like where that like the inner version of what outer space might be and there is a program to make sure that they invade that for people just like they, they're, they're weaponizing space, they want to weaponize the space inside of you that is your inner cosmos. Um, and so all of those things are things that, that come, and I'm like sweating right now as I talk about this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so... Um, no, I think, I think all, it's good. It yeah. It's good what you're saying. And I, because it's true that there's a, there's a weaponization of the atmosphere and uh, around the earth, and there's a weaponization of the internal. There's no doubt about that. And they're coming for everybody. Um, and, oh gosh, you, God, you were saying something and it just, oh, well, this is kind of, this just kind of popped into my mind. This was a very profound experience. Uh, as I began to wake up in, when I was in Florida, I wound up, it's in the book. I'll just do the real quick summary. I wound up in a UFO abductee group where mm-hmm. I was eventually reprogrammed. One of the things, two of the things that happened during that time that I spent with that woman in that small group, uh, I believe there were several other mind control victims in there. Now I didn't know and understand that. Although I will admit I was talking about military abduction then as well as alien mm-hmm. abduction. Um, and very particular things that I didn't have the language for mind control. I didn't understand mind control, but I would say things like they took me to a military base and they were putting things in my mind and taking things out. Mm -hmm. So I was aware enough at that point, one of the things that happened, one of the guys in the group (laughs) Mm -hmm. worked for Honeywell. Of course. And he took me to a insider uh, launch of the space shuttle at Cape Canaveral at night. Mm-hmm. So we weren't where other people were. We had a special pass and we were across a uh, part of the intercoastal waterway and the launch was out there. And it was one of the most physically uh, and psychologically profound things in my life to witness. Um, I, I mean, the ground was shaking beneath me and I often look back now and wonder why did that happen and why did it happen mm-hmm. when I was in this UFO group I was you know years later would realize I was reprogrammed for continued use during that time um, and the other thing was the woman who ran the group took me and another abductee in the group to uh, Cape Canaveral on a different trip overnight uh, to the NASA facility so yeah there's there's some link there there's some link and as i wrote about in the book you mentioned mars i have a memory at 18 and you know from the book that i i classify these so-called aliens that i had interaction with as more of a inter or inter or intra-dimensional entities or even demonic in some cases um malevolent beings asuras so forth uh but i talked about at 18 in the middle of the night in my bedroom standing before a being I'm finding myself standing before this being um, my eyes are closed and I can't seem to open them and I telepathically ask permission to look at him and when I open my eyes there's a humanoid being um, and I won't go through the whole description it's in the book but one of the things that happens is we union 
Okay, it's mm. not a sex as we know it with humans, but we union, and then he shows me the red place. <laughs> right. And right. Wow. I mean, so okay. Okay. Yeah. People ask so me years I'm, later. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. He didn't about. say Mars, but years later, people said to me, "Was it Mars?" And it's like, I don't know. It was just a red place. You know, it was a red, desolate uh, landscape. And he told me we were kin, and this is where we were from. So. This is all during my mind control. And right. at 18, that was the beginning of the heaviest use for me as an adult. Right. So that's so, exactly, that's yes. what I, so, I mean, and think about how many abduction stories people talk about that they were probed by the alien. So right. there's some kind of, whether it's some kind of hypnotic thing or it's a technology that there, there there's... I, possibly a human sexual interaction that is inappropriate happening to you and right. it's being uh, framed for your consumption as some sort of space extraterrestrial yes. something other kind of experience and, and don't forget don't forget the weaponry the weaponry do the weapons can be used in a way that it, and i've experienced it repeatedly as a rape do yes dues are directly dues are directed yeah. yes yeah, so, no, I mean, that's, I mean, you know, and, and also when someone is penetrated in a certain way by something, by a human or by something technologically, right. the spinal cord, the spinal cord will sometimes react in a way that creates a visual space that absolutely matches in a lot of ways the certain kinds of descriptions we've been programmed to believe of as space. Right. Randy? Essentially. How are you? Well, uh, I'm that actually baby sitting off. here feeling a little triggered right now. But yes. essentially the Kundalini thing is, is you know, again, Important. it's opening up a, a dimensional visual space yes. where, again, you've got induction, hypnotism. Uh, yeah. Just as um, my lapse has been used to hide certain laboratory operations, certain military operations that are associated to human harvesting and experimentation, mutation, genetic experiments. I think, can we assume at this point that secret space program is kind of a means to cover up both the weapons programs and other clandestine operations that are designed to pull us into cooperating with this energetic pattern that's going on of alteration of our atmosphere, the terraforming of the planet. As well as, as, well as the involuntary trans, in, transhumanism that we're being inducted into. Transhuman, and AI, yeah. Like, you know, right now it's involuntary, but they're trying, you know, I even think of some of this uh, bluebird uh, sphere being alliance stuff as a way to get people to somehow well there's a plasma the right there the sphere beings yeah you know the right you know kind of and, like and knowing that these a lot of the weaponry creates plasma yeah this is what mm -hmm. it does this mm -hmm. it, it creates and emits plasma and creates plasma balls and yep. uh, orbs and you know all kinds of stuff um yeah. so Again, it's, it's, yeah, I think that breaking it down into the real covert, what I would call, you know, weapons space program, as opposed to the repackage, this is my version, this is totally my opinion, I don't have any information, this is just my opinion, but I spent years in MUFON trying to get, get right, and you couldn't talk about military abduction back then. Um, <laughs> probably still can't someone. right now yeah. no now it's it's big news it's um super soldier program and everybody's you know everybody's involved i mean there's like they're coming out of the woodwork and right. but there's a lot of people from move on that that still are totally resistant they think all of their interactions with ships and entities and beings and stuff like that are aliens from yes. somewhere else and if you say military abduction they get really mad at you there's a lot of those people out there well, I agree, and I think they're obsolete. I think MUFON was made obsolete when exopolitics came on the scene, and that's the way I see it is that exo I mean, MUFON had no money, everything was a struggle, everything was alien, and it's morphed 
into somebody came along and and there's a lot of money there's a lot of backing there's a lot of big stars in exopolitics. politics i mean these are and in the secret cult space, following and, yes. and in the secret space program well they're they're quite linked um i yes. think a lot of exopolitics in the secret space program cross so to me there is a secret covert uh program on for sure or like you said Multiples, maybe it's yeah. several but it is all about weaponry and mind control and yep. on a global scale. That's yeah. what to me is the real issue. And I don't see that being brought out to, you know, other than mentioned here and there, it's not getting the press that the other issues that exopolitics yep. is talking about. That's just the way I see it. And I could be wrong mm -hmm. that, you know, the statistics there, but it doesn't seem like there's a balance and, and things like contact in the desert, there's no balance whatsoever. It's not even, it's not even brought in. Yeah. Did you just, just, you mentioned the, the orbs and the plasma of the balls generated yeah. by, so this whole thing with the sphere being alliance that that's, that's Corey Good's website is sphere being alliance. Oh no, I didn't know that. Yeah. And there's a picture of an orb and he is inside of it. Like, so he like, right. Yeah. So like what, it, like, you know, we know that they love to put in front of your face what it is. So, like this, the, these plasma weapons create these orbs, and he's inside of it. So he is being generated generated by some kind of weaponry program. You know what I well, mean? Yeah. No, that's that's great symbolism. And then I'll say the other side of it: there's always truth in the disinformation. So yeah. I absolutely know. And there's a book. What was it called? Cosmic Pulse something uh, i don't know if you know it randy um and there was a guy who was photographing these huge parasitic amoeba looking uh, mm. he was catching them on film in in the atmosphere so i mean to me those are That's real some yeah but these are very parasitic um yeah. you know uh just some of them were huge i mean some of them yeah. sometimes we just talked like about this on the last across. show with with we with, just had um, sean control yeah. on again last week yeah. we were talking so, about I, so there is a real yeah. there is a real i mean plasma is, there is a real state of matter it's the force state of matter it's a real thing but there's yeah. a weapons program that has co-opted and is generating plasma as yeah. well we have a plasma ionized atmosphere so to me again any of any of us who only go down the one you know, we're going to go down the one road. That's a, that's a psyop to me. If yep. you're, if you're containing the information so that the other truth that needs to be brought in so that you get a balanced view and you can decide, is that a, is that a big plasma, you know, entity thing in the sky sucking right. up some energy or is this a, a, you know, is that an alien orb or is this thing part of the weapon system that's well, yeah. well established, you know, we're not, we're not talking about, um, it, at these conferences, it doesn't seem to me, if there is a conference, I'm not aware of it, where we're, we're talking about this seriously. I mean, at, the, at the original Secret Space program, the one that, like, uh, Catherine Austin Fitz and Joseph Farrell and yes. whoever, like, I think they give, they're, 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 they're only talking about this, really, the, the, the financial and weaponry aspect of it, and I, so I think there is to me, that is that is a real thing. Now, there's yes. certain, I still believe that there's certain. They should include people like Sean Gautreau in their group, and they don't. And so I wonder why. But for I think some people, particularly the longer I look at her work, the work that Catherine Austin Fitz has yes. done on the financial aspect of this, like she yeah. really, she really has gone out on a limb. And I feel I I'm, I would love to ask her. How, does she what, this whole thing nonsense with the bluebirds and whatever that this is really undercutting her that her, her work yeah and the work of people Which like maybe the purpose the purpose the purpose, the purpose, of the purpose. It. you know and yeah. those two people that you named i want to say the same thing i'm a i'm a big reader of joseph farrell's books yeah and i um have a lot of respect for Kath, Kathy yeah. austin fitz we feel, and there we was an episode where she you know, they came after her when she didn't yeah. sign on. So, oh yeah, definitely. Um, she spent ten years but, in court. Right. Yeah. But what you know, what? How do you? How do you start to discredit those things when they start to gain momentum? Yeah. You start attaching this other information that you know. I mean, that's the way I would see it. Um, a friend asked me one time about a conference she got invited to and said, "Should I go?" And my response was, "Look at the lineup." 
you yeah. will never be able to disassociate from those people. Your right, talk well, may be good, but you will forever be attached well, in the media, yeah, you know, the I, alternative media to these other people. That's exactly what that our attachment. position is on this. Yeah. 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 Yes. And if you notice, Catherine Austin Fitz and Joseph Farrell are not at this conference. And I don't know if it's because they weren't invited or because they wouldn't want well, to. They be weren't invited. I can tell you that. And they also. I'm sure. Yeah. Have gone what they wouldn't have can, wanted to. The policy yeah. of the people who did the uh, secret space program conferences here in the U.S. was. And I can say this because this has been publicly outed that people like Corey Good was specifically not invited because they wanted to go with the hard evidence side of this because they're working yeah. what Emily and I call the topsoil. They're basically building a case of documentation, evidence, mm -hmm. true whistleblowers, mm -hmm. verifiable facts. And in my mind, the biggest problem with all of this is where this all ultimately winds up going. And it's uncomfortable. I think for us, given what, we do is that so you have the ground level people like Joseph Farrell, Catherine Austin Fitz, these people who are doing very solid work over a long period of time. You have people like yourself that have come out and disclosed about MK Ultra, about government programs. This also takes on a psycho spiritual aspect as well. And it's it's mm -hmm. probably the most narcotic aspect of this. And to be quite honest with you, I'm not completely isolated from this allure myself, that there mm -hmm. is a spiritual aspect to what we're talking about here. Yeah. In the sense that we're in a spiritual warfare program, mm -hmm. which is pulling people into either the dark side or the light side, but in fact, there's no difference between the two. They're just simply different shades of the same gray that they're presenting. Mm -hmm. And I know that doesn't sound like a question, but I'm wondering, in terms of research, in terms of evidence, we're never going to be able to prove all of the things that I think we know are going on. And I don't even think the mm -hmm. best researchers can, because at the top levels mm -hmm. of all of this, it's not documented. This is undocumented right. special access programs. By definition, right. it is not documented. Unacknowledged special access yeah. programs. That's so the, the, right. yeah. when, when none of us are ever going to, you know, get our file in the mail that tells that say, right. you know, that no, say all there's this. There's no FOIA for this. Yeah. So it is the yeah. weird, you know, the weird. They don't. Yeah. Yeah. They don't, they don't, they don't have this written down. And I have said on one or two occasions publicly and, that I actually believe that the release of the old uh, section of MKUltra documents was intentional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it was so limited in scope. Well, um, they also knew because then they could say it was over. Out. Yeah. Well, and they knew it was going to come out, but they let out what they wanted to leave, put out. And the, the real dirty, dirty stuff, um, not that, what was put there wasn't dirty enough. It was, but uh, the real secret, you know, uh, agendas and programs that were going on um, were covered that way. That's how containment works. So yeah. I think you're absolutely right about the research. I believe that I know that for myself, I'll always continue to delve into information and to talk about what I think needs talking about, but I do not for a second believe that this is going to be, uh, there's going to be an intellectual solution um, anytime soon, if ever, and that my sovereignty came through education, but very much so. Um, Inner you know, knowingness. Yeah, a spiritual part of it is I'm sovereign. Um, that doesn't change what happens in the physical realm around me or what comes gets thrown at me or I'm still under attacks. Um, and yet being sovereign, I know that it's about, I don't know, it sounds so cliche when you start talking about spirit or soul or whatever you want to call it, but bottom line, I'm sovereign. And they can do what they want to do to the physical and I'll keep doing what I'll do until I can't do it anymore. And to me, that's, that's all there is at this point. We, we cross the threshold and there's not going to be a um, smoking gun. We've had a thousand no. smoking guns. 
it's yeah. already been put out, you know? And yeah. so I, yeah. So Randy, I do agree. I agree with, I think that's what you were saying. I, uh, that there's not going to be. Yeah, I don't know. It's not an easy question to frame because like I said, there's so many levels to this and for every level of truth, it seems to me like there's three levels of deception baked in around them. It's like a yeah. layer cake right yeah. now. Yeah. Where yeah. what is being played off the most is clearly emotional responses from people. And some yeah. of that are hooks into the psyche where there's this desire, there's this whole movement built around ascension, this idea that we're in this new age, that we're about to embrace exopolitics, which is, exopolitics is a completely bullshit term. It means nothing. <laughs> the people <Right. laughs> who brought it out and popularized it, which is largely Michael Sala and Alfred Lambermont Weber, have created, they, they, they've taken air and baked it and made it look like a funnel cake. But how do you have exopo how do you have relationships with beings that don't recognize you as a sovereign entity in the first place, just on the surface of it? Well, and also yeah. there's the whole thing. I think the other layer of this stuff is, is, you know, when people start questioning uh, NASA and have we really been to the moon and do we really go to space? Well, then here comes the secret exopolitics or the secret space program, right? So, it, which, which seem like they're the sort of clandestine secret things that most people don't know about. So people who are starting to question the reality of space travel buy back into it because then there's this other secret version, right? So the idea mm -hmm. that like, you know, if you, just the idea that there's exopolitics implies that uh, we're going to be communicating with things in outer space. Right. So it implies that. So the, your, your belief in that is baked into that cake and any of these yeah. things where I just, you know, we're the, for me, I'm, I won't speak for myself, but me and Randy talk about this all the time. Anything that requires believing in it for it to be so like that, you know, is, um, it, it, it is a problem for me. You know, I say it over and over and over and I love it. That crow's quote, the, the belief is the enemy of knowing is, the things that like that is what that that's that's about now like that there isn't a more timely quote that anybody could have come up with when that than that for what we're in right now do you agree yeah yeah, yeah. no I, I i do and and my my uh understanding and my personal experience of it has been that there has to be an intellectual and a a, a an inner part of you guiding that intellect in other words, you've got to educate yourself. You've got to look at all the different views. You've got to take in all the information, the pretty stuff and the ugly stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got to all be taken in. And then you've got to use that highest part, whatever you want to call it, of yourself to discern what is valid and what is not valid. And there's no way to do this just, I, I absolutely, um, absolutely appreciate and have immense gratitude for the researchers that document things because I don't have that ability to always do that. So I can look to their information. Yeah. However, yeah. you've got to be able to extrapolate and, and build on that because like you just said, most of this stuff has never been written down anywhere. It's not in a computer system anywhere. I mean, there's a level of information that just doesn't, it flat out just doesn't exist to be picked up. You know, there are things that are being run outside of documentation. So we have to use our God-given, whatever you want to call it, uh, mind and brain power to take that information, take all that information in, and, and not only discern, but extrapolate a little bit and say, wait a minute, this doesn't add up, you know, yeah. this doesn't, this isn't jiving, you know, um, those are competing concepts and um one feels incredibly false and maybe feel isn't the right word but there's some level of wait a minute this is this is this is crap you know yeah. this isn't this isn't true um and as far as what's out in space um you know that's a wide open question for me i've had my own experiences of it being right here yep with me um on numerous occasions so you know that black with a billion dots of light. Um, I've experienced it in some very interesting ways and right here, right, right present with me. So 
I'm still, the jury's still out for me on what all that is, you know, yeah. but yeah. I, I know it is, it is connected to that sovereignty. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Whatever that the, means. Um, that, what you just said about, you know, how something feels and using our discernment and whatever. I don't know if you've got a chance to, Randy happened upon a very interesting article today and I sent it to you right before the show. I don't know if you got it. Like you got a three chance minutes to read it. before I we, we got on, I'm I saw sorry. it. And okay. I, no, I did. I, I yeah. opened it and I read just like the first paragraph or two and that was enough. Yeah. So like, it was, you know, Randy, why don't you tell, why don't you tell people about the article and what you posted today? This was, um, Gosh, she caught me on caught me on the uh, Basically, um, spirituality biz is the name of this that I, magazine. I, magazine. Uh, it's a magazine. It's a video show. It was an interview with Corey Good, and the nub takeaway quote from the whole thing was essentially Corey Good saying, "Look, we can be spiritual. We can be love and light." I'm again. This is me paraphrasing. We can be service to others, but at the same time, it's okay to make money. Now, I might not disagree with that on a surface level, except somebody's making a lot of money and somebody is advancing an agenda that requires people to pay a lot of money, much like, to me, this feels like a religion which is what I said in my original post. This is a cult. This is set up a savior program. It has set up imagery that feels reverent, like, oh, these creatures want to speak to you. They have a message for humanity. And oh, by the way, my website is $12.99 a month. You can come and see me at the conference. That's, what, $200 a day, probably. I mean, when you start look, plus all the marketing and merchandising, ancillary back-end contracts, TV shows. And it just also the polished way in which their productions look. You know, Everything. our shows are us in our living room here talking about this. Yeah. You know, it, 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 the, also, there, he talked about wanting to go to Boulder and create a corporation around this sphere being alliance. And so here's a person, if, he, if, if his story is what he claims it is, okay, then he is a mind controlled, someone who's a mind controlled operative. He used for these things, and now he's talking about it, and he's sharing his experiences. Well, the other people who come out and shared their experiences, like yourself, like Duncan O'Finian, and then there's a whole bunch of us who are trying to figure out what has gone on for us. We all either live in poverty or have to work six days a week to support ourselves. <laughs> yes. so I don't understand how there can be a corporation built around him sharing his mind control experience, but all the rest of us the ranges from being called crazy or to, you know, having to work full time while you try and figure out if and what something happened to you. Or, and in addition to that, being driven off the road, having someone yes. break right. into your house, you know, shooting oh, remote all that stuff. EM <laughs> yeah. weapons yeah, all, all that stuff. Yeah. 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 Of, there's, of course, you know, so there was an inter another interesting article that Randy found last week where somebody who had gone and looked at all other people who claim to be whistleblowers, I, you know what I mean, or whatever. Like, I think that's a bad term to use, whistleblowers, because that's like a legal term. But other people who had shared their mind control or similar kind of experience to what Corey Good says he's sharing. And there's some problems with uh, the article and with the people, that, the stories and some of the people that are presented in there, but the overall gist of the thing was right. All of these people have either ended up living in poverty, dead, in jail, or just they, they've dropped out, nobody knows where they are, or, you know, whatever. And But somehow, not only has Corey Good gotten to tell his story, but he's gained freedom from that. He's gained financial freedom and opportunity. Yeah. And now he, so to, there's, you know, what, one of these things is not like the other. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And, and I just... Um, there's where our discernment and our, yep. hey, what the heck is going on? What is... What is happening here? Because if 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 someone like you know, let's say someone like uh, is talking about satanic ritual abuse, uh, those people don't have much luck publicly. Um, and what's interesting to me is nothing in the 
satanic ritual abuse for pedophilia community actually stops or changes. Right. Okay. You know, like the, this really, uh, aliens and, and UFOs and, and, uh, weekends for, you know, several hundred dollars or more. I think it's more. Ex- yeah. <laughs> to go experience this out in the desert with someone or, you know, someone who supposedly has got a real in with these beings and like Greer, um, these are completely dichotomous storylines and lives being led. Um, I mean, most witnesses who come forward with names and facts and dates like those two uh, children in Hampstead. Um, Hampstead. Hampstead. The little blondes who I watched the videos. There's that's the real deal. And the little boy is he's gone, man. I mean, he's just gone. Uh, you know, their videos get pulled. They get sent back to the people that are abusing them. Um, yep. I mean, this is the way it goes with the true stories to me. The ones that are being uh, sent out there as mind control subjects who are being designed for public consumption, their stories seem to go like the Greers of the world and the goods of the world. And that's what I see is it's completely, completely different uh, lives being led there. Yeah. You know, and I can't glamorize SRA. I mean, I remember back. Or mind control. But I, you know, I, I, think, I, actually, no. I actually think they are trying to glamorize it in like the pop music I media, I do right? Too. Like they're glam- like they're, they're, people don't understand that that's what they're watching. So we have this right. weird thing going on where people are actually watching the symbology of satanic ritual abuse occur as pop music videos and thinking it's wonderful. But then when somebody comes out and actually talks about what it really is, they're like, oh, that person was crazy mm-hmm. and, you know, whatever, all that. Right, kind of meaning, weird, meaning, yeah. You can't really, the real thing, you can't glamorize it. So if you're glamorizing it or if you're making it a desirable experience, Mm -hmm. you're not looking at the real thing. You're making a fantasy out of it. It's like sadomasochism. But if you go back, and I worked with another talk show host about seven years ago. We did interviews with uh, Randy and Pamela Noblet, who did Mind Control in the 21st Century, which was heavily into SRA. I do not see those people out there on the lecture circuit. I've never seen them on the lecture circuit. They can barely get arrested in the alternative media because that book right. documents in gruesome detail firsthand accounts, much like you've put out, Elisa, about your life and what happened when you were in the project. Mm-hmm. This is not the stuff that people want to hear. You know, this no. super soldier thing now is comic book fantasy for the most part. And it's mostly he's bleeding. Coming out, and you heard he's coming out with a comic book. That's part, was part of the interview no. and, the, and the thing. The, uh, Corey Good is coming out with a comic yeah, see, book. I didn't this get is to an the entertainment interview. franchise. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, that would like, li- like literally. So if you're not so outraged dilute, about it. So, no, if well, you're not they outraged they about dilute. it. I'm sorry. I talked to everyone. No, no, go, no, go ahead. No, you I just it. want to say if you're not outraged about anything else, you have to be outraged about the fact that they have taken something this horrific, this horrendous and turned it into an entertainment franchise in yeah. such a cavalier yeah. method. Yeah, like that people, alone pisses me off so bad that I'm willing to lay my ass on the line to expose this guy. Yeah. People I know yeah. who, who have what I would consider to be, it's hard to say, a, a real kind of abduction experience. And when I say real, I mean it could be a my lab or if there is something out there, there is. They're horrified by it. They live in fear of it. And like they're... Um, it's nothing pretty. I've never heard anyone talk about, um, sometimes, the, sometimes they'll talk about things that, out there that weren't necessarily completely malevolent, but that they were disturbed by the fact that they didn't know what they were and they never figured it out. Nobody has ever come and said, oh yeah, there was a bluebird who told me, be loving and kind. And you know, like it, it, right. I just, it's so, um, it's so weird. Like it's just so, uh, and there's, I don't, like, I, don't, I don't mean to be like, an asshole, but I just don't understand how anybody can even believe any of this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I just, like, you know, I'm, I'm gonna get, I get lots of, I'm just gonna get myself some more hate than I ever already get, and that's just fine. But, you know, like, I just don't, like, a friend, a friend who I was talking about this with off to the side, who also is a, does radio, was like, he, it's so infantile. He just doesn't understand. Like, it's like, it, it, it reminds him of Sesame Street with Big Bird. He's like, I just mm-hmm. don't understand how, 
like it, it's it's ridiculous. But is this maybe the sign that well, we've been turned into such infants that this is what we believe? I don't believe it. Well, but- I think I think this you got to you got to go back and um, being a, a mind control victim. I I think I have maybe a, a a different a different understanding of how that can work so well. Is that you got to go way back? This isn't this isn't just you know this particular issue. It has been preceded and funneled down not only not only through other mind control programs but through uh escal incredible escalation of violence in the world at yeah. this point uh the fear level of the average person that i meet now is just it's off the charts they're confused they're depressed they're frightened so you got to take a look at the whole kit and caboodle to me i mean it's like this agenda is just I, I say this with no respect whatsoever, but it's it's masterful. It yeah. has been in the works for so long, and it it funnels it into you know. Sometimes I see them sitting back laughing, like look look what we can do at this point. These poor you know idiots out there, and I don't mean that um, you know when you're under mind control. There's an incredible amount of intelligence. Most mind control victims are incredibly intelligent. It's mm-hmm. not really an issue of that. It's an it's an issue of a long term psychological warfare mm-hmm. that involves physiology. They're they're working your body, mm-hmm. they're working your mind, and they're attacking your spirit. And and what I read the the whole concept is to break the will of the enemy. That's what yes. in one of the military documents was that psychological operations done properly utilizing all the different uh, five avenues that he mentioned uh, is designed to not only control information, but ultimately to demoralize, to demoralize yeah. and, and physically take out. So in other words, there's a slow psychological and physiological degradation until you are no more either you can't fight me uh psychologically or we physiologically will take you out and i can vouch for this i'm on the slow kill i know several people who are um that's just where we get handed down to after we're no longer of use in mk ultra you either get taken out completely or you get put on the slow kill so and and i have to some days pull my you know when i wake up get up and and make myself get focused and get busy because I, that's not what I, you know, necessarily want to do because of what's happening. So on a mass scale, it's Mm -hmm. the same thing. It's that slow, you know, boiling frogs, um, slowly, slowly cook them down until they don't even know that they're not making, they're not using critical thinking. They're not using that intelligence combined with that, intuitive ability to to discern and extrapolate so it's it's a long-term thing and and i don't have a problem seeing how society has gotten to this this place because that's yeah you know it's 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 the same thing in mk ultra i mean they hit you hard and fast early but it's lifetime it's a lifetime deal they don't stop you know so that's my two cents worth on on that that was actually an incredible way to kind of pull a lot of concepts together because it's really the microcosm of what this is all about. Yeah. Yeah, They're corralling everybody anyway. I mean, you know, I've, we've all said this for years because anybody that's done this work for any time knows everybody is in a mind control program. It's just that they have ways to tear you into the one that works for you. Yeah. Hey, Paxil, ask, doc, ask your doctor if Paxil is right for you. I mean, they've got, <laughs> they've got right. a program for everyone. This is just one of them. But right. Rem- Remote Paxil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I guess, you know, because we're, we're kind of running down time. Is there anything we didn't bring up that you want to bring up in the course of this, Elisa? No, I think I think we really covered it well, all three of us. I think it. Uh, you there, know, there's one. Uh, there's one more thing I want to say. Um, if you're, are you, there's nothing. Yeah. I'm sorry. No. This I want to speak for myself here, but you know maybe you guys agree. We're not 
doing this or even naming names because we hate any of these people or because we wish anything harmful for them. I actually feel for most, there's some people that I think, you know, are seem to be nefarious, but even for them, I have a certain level of compassion because how did they end up losing their humanity to that point? We, this isn't about creating a divisiveness or, or saying somebody's bad because any one of us could have ended up in that same position if, if, yeah. if for something inside of us hadn't guided us to go a different way. Um, so I, I, you know, I can't imagine, I'm sure there are people who are involved in this who have those moments of like, fuck, I'm caught in something I can't get out of, but they keep going because it's hard work. To, it, it seems overwhelming to get out of it. And so my hope in it, with all of this isn't even to tell people not to go, but to go with the awareness that there is an agenda being pushed and that you're not just going to watch the agenda, you're going to participate in the agenda. So be careful and, and, and go with it. Under, don't buy everything you take in. You know, look at everything yeah. objectively and then think about it for a while after when you're out of the situation before you decide what you're going to keep and what you're going to let go. And, you know, to these people who sometimes through almost no fault of their own have found themselves in a place where they're out of integrity or where they're involved in something that is not what they intended to be involved in. I invite you to please like, you know, like rejoin us. We're here trying to figure out what's really going on and to try and do something to really help. We don't really know. We're still, we're still trying to figure it out, but Mm -hmm. something has gone horribly askew and we're not, I have no interest in outcasting anybody. I want to invite them to rejoin the grass, grass, you know, the, 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 the horizontal, you know, or whatever we're going to call it. Like, you know, like this has to be a, like a horizontal bottom up movement, not a movement where there's someone sitting at the top and telling people what reality is. Um, and so I think one of the things that's happened with some of this truth community and alternative information community is, is somebody does something screwed up and then they get outcasted and we just throw them aside. There's still people. Yeah. We have to start creating a way for people to come back with us because this we, we really all, if we're going to ever like fix this or completely understand it, we are going to have to work together. I don't yeah. like collectivism. We're all individuals, but we need to cooperate and collaborate and whatnot. And so we have to, you know, we have to um, become more honest with each other, honest with ourselves. And when people screw up, help them rejoin, help them get back to themselves as opposed to just casting them aside. So this is done for me, at least for me, this wasn't a happy thing to do this. Um, and it's actually something that I'm doing out of love and concern for other people who I know are out there genuinely trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. Yeah. Well, I mean, in the background well, of all so. this, most, most people don't realize that most of what we do is not ever broadcast, video cast or podcast. That we're in constant yeah. contact with people. And I want to remind people as well, we're coming up on a year ago when we went through this whole series of events with Max Spears. I do not want to live through that again. And I don't think anybody else in any of the communities does. And mm -hmm. it's very easy to yeah. see how assets are disposable in this business, especially in a media where people have become so jaded and cynical. And yeah. also when we can't really discern who and what is real anymore that we yeah. have to keep a grip on the narrative and we have to stay focused on what the goal is. And if the deification of a person means that they're ultimately going to be sacrificed, that mm -hmm. is unacceptable. Yeah. Well, I have, well, I have I concerns say, for uh, Corey. I yeah, have concerns I want to say for Corey Good. Both yeah. of you, well said. And I do have something I, I want to add after listening to both of you. And that is my final word would be that I've spent nine years now and what I call, you know, coming out publicly and deprogramming. And I've made a point um, and held steadfast to it, except for in my books, I figured if people were willing to buy the books, there might be a few names dropped um, in my collages that are there if people want to look at it. But when I went public on radio, um, I wouldn't name anyone. And Part of that was, uh, there were a couple of reasons for that, but part of it is that a lot of the perpetrators, people who were victimized wound up as perpetrators like myself. I wound up being utilized and not only 
harming other people, but taking lives. And when I look out there, it's really difficult. And we talked about this, Emily, before doing this interview. It's really difficult to know where that line is of using people's names when you go on a, a show and have a conversation like this. But the reason I agreed to do this, and I was very trepidatious all the way up until the beginning of this recording um, about doing this, is because there's a lot of people who are victims and you wind up having to use their names because I've tried to do it sometimes in a way that I'm not. I'm speaking in general terms and by groups and by organizations and religious organizations and not naming people. And then it stays so general that you see people, you know, being deified. Um, And so I do think there came a point and I don't know if, you know, what effect this, this radio show will have, but there did come a point in this particular conversation where some names needed to be said publicly because they have now reached quote God status end quote. And um, they do have followings. And I do believe whether it's misinformation or disinformation, it's the same result. And um, so that's my reason for coming on and being willing to, you know, talk about very particular, particular people yeah. at this point. No, well said. And, and, and or organizations that are, are, you know, being utilized to spread that information as well. That's it. Absolutely. Um, so I think we're done. Yeah. Thank, Elisa, thank you. It's always a pleasure. And you're, you're welcome here anytime. Um, Thank you. We really appreciate your contribution yeah, to this. Do. Like, we appreciate yeah. your openness, your uh, valor in speaking out. Can you tell people? Can you tell people where they can find your work? Yeah, um, there's a, a blog site, our life beyond mkultra.wordpress.com, and there's a lot of um, all my collages are there. You can get a link to the two books, um, which is our life beyond mkultra book one and book two. But there's also a resource section, and I really encourage people. I've spent years now building um, a series of um, articles and links, just loaded with links to all kinds of information, not just, you know, the MKUltra information, but every aspect that we've talked about and and more. So there's a lot of free information there, too. So I encourage people to go and and take a look around. And I I know there's a lot of people out there, and I now who are coming awake to some of this stuff and trying to figure out things that have gone on in their own life. And Mm -hmm. I um, recommend, I highly recommend people read, read your book, read Elisa's books. They are difficult to get through, but there's, you know, there's stuff in there that will be helpful in, in catalyzing you to figure out some of the stuff that has gone on for you or not gone on, you know? And um, yeah, I, yeah, it really, um, so brace yourself, but dive in. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Well, I, sh- I want to just say thank you to you guys too. I really appreciate you uh, putting the energy and the time into what you do. It's important work. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming on. Elisa E., our guest for the show. I think we've put a lot of information into this. Um, for those with discernment, they'll go through it. They'll use it. They'll digest it. and. Uh, Sometimes shows come from the heart as well as the mind, and I think this one came from the gut as well. That's going to wrap it up for this time. This is Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. The website is offplanetradio.com. I'm Randy Moggins with Emily Moyer and our very, very dear guest tonight, Elisa E. The truth is out there. It's inside you. Good night. You are listening to Off Planet Radio at offplanetradio.com.